Okay, call the um, February 2021 uh, general meeting of the Taft LSC to order at 631. Uh, can we all say the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, Miss Secretary Keeling, I have to unmute you. I'm going to go ahead and start unmuting the LSC members. But Miss Keeling, will you take a roll call? Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to wait for you to unmute. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Anita is muted, but Anita Bernacki. I see her. She is there. There she is. Mary Kay Cobb. Do not see her. No. Julieta Rosales Pasco. Wonderful, thank you. Chrissy Estrada. Here. Here. Kathy Fern. Here. Monica Moore. She had texted she may not make the meeting. I don't think she's here. Thank you. Uh, Chris Raguso. Oop, there you I are. See your hand raised. Yeah, okay. Laura Keeling, I am here. Maria McDormand. I'm here. Bridget Doherty Trebbing. Here. Scott Flensner. Here. Amelia Mano. Here. And Mark Chris Haber. Here. Great. We have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, we, uh, can we get an approval of today's agenda? You were all emailed it. It's also in the Google Drive. And we get a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion. Maria? Yeah. Can I get a second? I take on the motion. Ms. Casco? Okay. All right, roll call for the agenda. Anita Bernacki. She's muted again, Mama. Yeah, there she go. All right. Yes. Um, uh, Juliana Pasco. Present. We're oh, here. approving the agenda, Juliana. I second. Oh, perfect. Do you approve the agenda? Yeah. Thank you. Chrissy Estrada? Yes. Kathy Fern? Yes. Chris Raguso? Yes. Laura Keeling? Yes. Maria McDormand? Yes. Bridget Doherty Trebbing? Yes. Scott Plinsner? Yes. Amelia Mano? Yes. And Mark Chris Haber? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Agenda is approved. Okay, next we need to approve the minutes from the last meeting, December 8th, the organizational meeting, and the special budget meeting both held on January 12th. Those minutes were also in the Google Drive. Can we approve all three minutes at once? Do we have to do it separately? I think we can unless there's some discussion about edits or anything, but if, if anybody had any edits or changes or corrections to any of those minutes, speak now. I'll make a motion to approve all as written last meeting. Okay, Ms. Raguso, can I get a second? I'll second, Estrada. Okay, Chrissy, Estrada. Okay, roll call approval for all three sets okay. of minutes. And Anita is muted again. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Thanks, Kath. I'm not good. Yes. Anita yes. Bernacki? Yes. Uh, Julieta Pasco? Yes. Chrissy Estrada? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Kathy Fern? Yes. Chris Raguso? Yes. Laura Keeling? Yes. yes. Maria McDormand? Yes. Bridget Doherty Trebbing? Yes. Scott Plenster? Yes. Amelia Mano? Yes. And Mark Chris Haber? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. If um, Mary Kay or Monica shows up, somebody let me know. Okay. All right, that's the minutes. Next we have reports, uh, Mr. Grishaber, principal report. 
want to start with the budget transfers? Yeah, can you uh, project it, please, Kath? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Appreciate that. This one. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay. Raise it up just a little bit. Go up to the top. Yeah. Okay, so uh, budget approvals. These are uh, normally we need LSC approval for anything over $10,000. So the first one I need approval for is something called E&K construction for renovation. Uh, really what they're doing are, is renovating our stairwells uh, from the first floor to the, uh, the third floor uh, off of the gyms. They're, they're deplorable. If anybody's ever been in there, the, the paint is falling off. It looks like they have never been painted since the, the, the 60s. So we needed to get that done. So that's $12,250. The next one is for Worthington Direct. Uh, this is dry erase boards, steel stools, and, and tables for our two art rooms uh, that are going to be uh, at the uh, New York City campus. Sorry. I don't know what that is. Somebody not muted? Well, oh. just the LSC is unmuted, but okay. Answer. we'll have to deal with it because I think it's just feedback. I got you. Additional laptops uh, for our staff is 20 or uh, I'm sorry, $13,000. Uh, I think we got either 15 or 20 laptops to replenish some of our teacher laptops that are going. And then the last one, which we just added today is $21,000 for our athletic trainer. This is a six month parade of February to August. So it may not be as much as $21,000. If we do start next week, they'll prorate obviously some days off because it's not from February 1st, but it looks like sports are gonna be a go starting next week on, on all different levels. So I'm really excited about that, but we need this approval today because we wanna get that athletic trainer up and running by next week when all the sports are, are, are ready. On the bottom, we have budget transfers to really take care of all those things I just told you about. We have a budget transfer of 12,250 for E and K construction um, for the stairwells. Then we have Worthington Direct 11,000 and some change for the art rooms. Uh, the teacher laptops, 13000 and uh, some change. And then $26,000, this is the normal monthly thing that we normally do to offset negatives. These negatives are ESP buckets that are overtime for ESP, our clubs. Uh, like I had said earlier in the meeting, uh, I believe the CTU contract calls for $280, something like that uh, for a club. We pay all club members $320 uh, as a small token of our appreciation. We know they put in many more hours than, than what's reflected, but uh, we have to, we have a, you know, as many clubs as we can get, we're fine with that. So uh, we pay all of our teachers 320. Uh, so we need to replenish that bucket. Our CIWP, SAP and summit planning after school, we normally pay our teachers uh, after school if they're attending a, a meeting like that. So we needed $26,000 mm -hmm. to offset those negatives. Uh, then we had $3,000 to offset um, negative sub buckets. Um, some of our substitutes, I guess, um, I don't know what, I'm not sure what that is. Negative, I should have asked them, offset negative subs bucket. Um, not sure what that would be for. That might be in, in one of our smaller um, budgets instead of the uh, 115 funds. And then the ATA, $21,000 for our uh, tra um, trainer. Any questions on that at all? We did discuss this at length at the budget meeting, which just preceded this meeting. Uh, one of my questions was regarding the athletic trainer. That is a position we had previously to the pandemic. And now we're reinstituting that person uh, going forward because of course they're gonna be starting up again. Does anyone on the LSC have any questions? I, have, I don't see everybody right now. So I'm gonna start unmuting people. So we can go ahead and vote. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, can we, any questions or can we get a motion to approve the budgets as, the budget transfers as um, presented? If there's no questions, I'll make a motion to pass the budget transfers. Okay. So Anita. Maria. So Anita and Maria. Okay. All right, roll call to a pass the budget transfers. She's muted now. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Are you heard? Okay, there you go. You're Thank you. Sorry, I was muted. 
Okay. Wonderful. So that was Anita and Maria. Thank uh -huh. you. Okay, Anita Bernacki. Yes. Julieta Pasco. Oh, she muted. Hold on. And Mary K. Cobb is uh, getting in too. So let me find. Oh, we should play it right there. Unmuting. Okay. Hey, Julieta, you should be unmuted. Julieta Pasco. Yes. And Chrissy Estrada. Yes. Kathy Fern. Yes. Chris Raguso. Yes. Laura Keeling. I'm a yes. Maria McDorman. Yes. Bridget Doherty Trebbing. Yes. Scott Plensner. Yes. Amelia Mano. Yes. And Mark Grishaber. Yes. And Mary Kay Cobb is on also. Oh, and Mary Kay Cobb. Hi, everyone. Yes, please. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Stop share. Perfect. Okay, that's the uh, budget finance uh, transfers. Um, principal report. Do you want me to share that one? Uh, before you do, I want to bring up real quick, since we did talk about budget, I want to bring up uh, what uh, I, I don't believe I need uh, LSC approval for this, but I do want to run it by the LSC. Last year when we had the pandemic, we did pay for a lot of the senior expenses, uh, which we paid for their cap and gown, we paid for their sign, we paid for the Rosemont Theater, uh, we paid for their uh, diploma cover. Uh, because we had thought it was a, probably a once in a lifetime thing. We felt, we felt bad for our seniors. Um, and so we, we picked up that cost. Unfortunately, I don't think we're in, in a, a good enough financial position this year to do that. So what I'm gonna ask for is a $75 graduation fee uh, for all of our seniors uh, for this year. And, and again, just to give you the numbers, I mean, it would be, I know I'm missing something, but I know the sign is $10. Uh, cap and gowns are 20. The Rosemont Theater is $20. Diploma covers are 10. We have $5 of kind of a miscellaneous fee. So those would be kind of for uh, AVID, uh, the stoles for MJ, uh, National Junior Honors, or National Honor Society. Uh, AVID has some different stuff going on with it too. So uh, it's, it's a little under seven, a little over $70. So I'm going to ask for $75 for all graduating seniors. I'm also going to ask uh, if they can, if they can maybe pick up the fee of someone that can't afford it, because I obviously don't want someone that cannot afford it to miss the graduation uh, because of uh, they can't pay their fees. Uh, but I, but I think it's only responsible. This is a, what they call a benefits derived tax, which means we're kind of we're kind of taxing the people that are benefiting from it. So I think seventy five dollars is is a fair fee uh, to charge our seniors, especially for everything that they get. Uh, the reason it's why it's not 110 is because we're actually saving $10,000 on the Rosemont Theater by not going inside. Um, so uh, I just wanted to bring that up. Any discussion on that at all with anybody? All right, Kath, can you bring up the principal report, please? Mm -hmm. One second. And that one is in, that's no, that would not be in the budget one, right? No, that's in the outside one. Okay. Here uh, we go. Got it. Okay, push my screen. Uh, there we go. Okay, uh, going down um, on competency A, we continue to have weekly TCT freshman and sophomore weekly house meetings. Um, again, I, I, I can't stress enough how these meetings, um, and I, I said it in one of the other meetings, um, our metrics at Taft are off the charts as far as the network goes and, and probably other schools go, but our freshman on track is higher than it was last year. Our attendance is doing wonderful. Uh, Mr. Kuzma just came up with a really good stat today that uh, from this year to last year, uh, 1,700 kids have improved their GPA this, in one year and 1,100 have gone down. So the fact that there's 600 more kids that have improved it, it is really good. So I understand COVID has taken a, 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 a toll on a lot of us, but our kids are coming through uh, and I just want everybody to know that. But I think a lot has to do 
with our TCT freshman and sophomore weekly house meetings where we can actually talk about students. Uh, we had a professional development on Friday, fe uh, February 5th. Uh, with our, it was a principal directed one. Uh, one of the sessions we had was discussing, discussing taboo topics. I'm gonna put a special shout out to my group leaders, uh, Ms. Nicholas, uh, Mr. Cohen and uh, Mr. Uh, Rigoberto uh, Torres were phenomenal on it. It's, uh, it's really important because as we go forward, uh, our teachers are kind of be, being asked to kind of talk about topics in their classes. And so it's important on, on, on just giving teachers the tools uh, that they may need to help facilitate uh, talks and also to, to not to understand that um, there's there could be offenses that go on and maybe you don't know about it but um, so we're, we're we're doing we're giving some strategies to the teachers to help our kids out uh, in the in these groups so it was it was phenomenal I, I love my group so uh, woohoo uh, freshman on track right there 92 percent um, the network's at 83%. So I'll read that again. Our freshman on track this year is 92.68%. Network is 14.8%, 83%. What I'm really aggravated about, and I know Ms. Raguso is too, is if we were back on SQRP, we'd be a level one plus school right now because that's what was holding us back. But you know what? We play the cards that we have. Uh, the next one should be sophomore on track. Um, uh, I must have copied it wrong, but it should be sophomore on track. And we are about the same though. Uh, sophomore on track, I think it maybe is, is a half a point lower on both ends, but sophomore on track is also great. Our graduation rate of 2019 uh, was 84.5% and last year was 86.9%. Again, we gained another point right there because 85% was the cutoff point. We had four points last year in the SQRP that 86.9 would have given us five points. Another reason why we would have slam dunk the level one uh, rankings. Um, but again, that 86.9, we're just going to go up and up on that every year. And I can see that close to 90% as we get more and more kids um, into our school that are academically focused and the, and the freshman academy, uh, the whole vibe over there is paying off that the kids understand. Uh, it's just, we're at, you know what, if half's a stock, by tapped, okay? Next one. Uh, we participated in a three-year-long equal opportunity sc uh, schools training uh, by CPS. This is a lot of our administrators. And this is talking about how do we get our minority students into advanced classes, okay? This is some, this is some tough work. It's, it's taking um, data from student surveys, from teacher surveys, and developing a, lo a long uh, thought out relevant plan that can get our minorities into these AP classes and IB classes. And so as an example, I don't know if I go on later on to talk about this, but one of the, one of the things that I thought was phenomenal is that they asked the kids, like, what is stopping you from taking these classes? And, and, and one of the, one of the, their responses was, I don't really have an, a trusted adult um, that I feel comfortable talking with about this. I mean, or, or you know, like I, I would really like to talk to my trusted adult about this, if, if someone could talk to me about it. And then we put a survey out to the kids. And do you understand we have 247 of our staff members that were identified as by, by sophomores and juniors as their trusted adult. Think about that, 247 of our adults were where some child said, they're my trusted adult. And I know when I went to St. Pat's, I needed that trusted adult to talk things through, especially when I was going through, my parents were going through that divorce. That was crucial and that was life altering for me. So the fact that they identified those, those teachers, we're gonna try to uh, get those teachers and those kids hooked up a little bit so they can talk about the fact that maybe they might want to talk, uh, take some AP classes and some other and some other things. So uh, that that was huge. Sorry, and that that was that was from the EOS training. Uh, next year we're going to pilot this, and I'm sure some of you will hear about this. We're piloting a senior seminar. Uh, just think of a, uh, it's not a homeroom. It's a senior seminar where our counselors can get together. It's not for all of our students, but it's going to be for about 300 of our students. Uh, that are going to get together for one semester and then get a lot of their KPI stats done as far as their FAFSA done and their college searches go. And we think that that is really going to raise a lot of our numbers and, and change the trajectory of a lot of our kids' lives. Uh, we're looking at AP Computer Science for next year, IB Language and Lit for all of our students eventually as juniors. Um, again, we can talk more and more about this, but I just want to, I'm, I'm planting seeds right now, and occupational prep 
uh, for 2021-22. This is all the APs. I'm gonna be honest with you. And we talk about it a lot in our cabinets. My APs do not take a day off. They're always like, how do we get better? How do we get better? It, it's just amazing. And, and you know, I, I, I say it a lot, I'm the weakest link on that team and, these, and they're phenomenal and they're coming up with these things. And I just wanna put a kudo out to them because they, they are not satisfied with where we're at right now and, and which is great. Um, okay, FAFSA completion. Uh, right now the network's at 65, PASS at 74. Okay, another, another uh, statistic where we're doing well. Uh, let's move down a little bit. <coughs> we had a virtual meeting, Ms. Ragusa was there with procurement and budget to discuss capital projects. One of the problems we have every year is um, I'm a pretty good squirrel as far as putting some money aside and saving some money for capital expenses at the end of the year. But what happens a lot of the times we run out of, we run out of time and we can't get these things done. So what, what do we do the last couple of years? We buy computers and we buy um, Chromebooks, which actually worked out well for us the last two years because who would have known that we would have a pandemic and a lot of our kids would need those computers. So it actually worked out well, but we don't wanna keep doing that. I mean, we were kind of saturated with our computers right now. So we wanna talk about if we get some money, can we put it aside and still pay for these capital uh, projects that we have that we've discussed about in our facilities uh, later on down the road. And so they said they would. And then what I was really trying to get out of them, um, I, I knew they would do that, honestly, because they've already done that uh, in the future. But I, 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 I use that is to open the door. But what I really wanted them to kind of nod to is I said, if I get someone that can, one of our alumni that can donate money and they say, I'll donate if CTS donates money, will CTS do that? Because you've done it before with our lights. We had Len Winslow say, I'll donate 300 if CPS donates 50. And they jumped on that in a heartbeat because it actually, you know, it's, it's if anybody on this call right now, if I said your kitchen costs 20,000 to do and, and I'll pay for 15,000 if you pay for five, we're all doing it. So, so they were for it, they weren't committed to it, but at least we have their ear now where I can come back and say, remember we had that discussion? Well, here we go again. So that, so that was a, a good conversation. Uh, ongoing conversations with alumni regarding funding of capital projects. I said, Jim Jacobs, I've had a nice conversation with him about the Jim Jacobs Theater. Class of 59 is looking at um, uh, taking one of the corners, uh, putting a brick thing up there on the corners, uh, the marquees, I always forget what the name is, where it says like Pack High School, we want to put one up at Natoma and Bryn Mawr. Because when you went by, you would say, oh, this is the, you are a beautiful school, but you don't know it's Pack. So we want to get something on that corner. We also want to get one on the on, on Natoma and Hurlbut right there because you really can't see that it's tapped. And so we want to get a couple of those corners uh, uh, staked out. Uh, Class of 59 said they're going to pay it. We also have some uh, football booster club people that said uh, they had committed to $50,000 on, um, on the concession stand. But again, that was before COVID. So we're still trying to cultivate um, that right now. Um, we held a meeting with the Smith Group uh, in our facilities. We kind of went over that where they're they're giving us, you know, a couple. Uh, last time we spent twenty four thousand dollars on those pro on the specs that they could give us, and they're really valuable because because if we're going to go to alumni, they need to see what it looks like. I can I can paint them a picture and say, oh, it's going to be really cool, and we're going to have hot dogs. They want to see what it actually looks like, so they're drawing those pictures for us, and they're eventually going to draw the architectural plans that we can hand out to say bid on this. How much will this cost? Because we're going to eventually need cost. Uh, and then I had a meeting with teachers. Uh, I'm going to have a meeting this week with teachers, students, and alumni Wayne uh, regarding our varsity tree initiative. I mentioned that last week. My new passion is trees. Um, there's 189 indigenous trees in Illinois right now. I want to get as many as we can uh, on our campuses. Uh, I would love a uh, tree walk for uh, the neighborhood and also our kids uh, in elementary schools, they can walk around. I want some of these trees that are also in literature, like the giving tree, whatever tree that was. The tree grows in Brooklyn, I think is an oak tree. We can talk about the birches and um, uh, uh, who's the guy, uh, Robert Frost poems. So I would like them to be able to walk around the campus and see these trees that are actually mentioned in a lot of these uh, 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 literature uh, works. So uh, that's kind of like our, our project right now. So we're working with uh, the Morton Arboretum right now to get some trees planted. So my, my goal is, you know, years and years from now, I'm going to come rolling up on my on my walker and I'm going to look around and, and, and in the fall, the, the campus is going to look like a bowl of Fruit Loops because it's going to be so picturesque with all those things. So, you know, that's just me talking on. So, okay, uh, next one, uh, completed some training modules. 
for state schools. Uh, and then again, I am a member, uh, one of the few principals uh, that's on the high school reopening task force. And we talk about how, you know, whatever's going on right now, no, for some reason, uh, everybody keeps forgetting about two words, high schools. There's, they're not even mentioning it. So, but we are in discussions right now, like how can we bring high schools back? When will we bring them back? What's it gonna look like? And so I'm, I'm on that committee right now. Dates to remember, um, we got an alt day, our reboot day, which our kids are loving. Um, and so, you know, the statistics on that is 70% of our kids do nothing and relax and chill. The other 30% catch up on things. So I'm good with both those outcomes. Um, Monday, March 22nd, spring break. Um, uh, wow, that's, that's crazy. Um, and then class of 21 uh, graduation. Right now we are, we are counting on an outdoor graduation at the Rosemont Theater like we did last year. And I think it's gonna be phenomenal, phenomenaler than it was last year. So that's all I have, any questions? Beautiful. Thank you, Ms. Hearn. Sorry, I'm muted. Um, Ms. Keeling is asking spring break is a week later. Uh, that's what I had it down as too, but I think they moved it a week earlier. Is that correct? I thought I took it off our calendar. Um, let me look again on my calendar. Uh, Eric, do you have a do you have it there? You might call it up real quick. Find him. There he is. Yeah, I'm trying to confirm that it is. When I saw that, I searched the CPS calendar and it appeared to start on 329. I'm okay. only asking. I could be wrong. I thought That's it was correct. Right. So it is weekly. It starts it on March 29th. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. My we have fault. some college tours planned, and I went, oh no. <laughs> okay. Okay. My fault. All right. Cool. Okay. Um, let's see. That's the principal report. I'll stop that. Okay. X. Okay, before we go to CIWP, I did neglect to make a couple of announcements in the beginning. Um, for the rest of the LSC, we will have to start the principal evaluation shortly. So watch your email for some uh, dates for that. And then also, there will be two open spots on our LSC in the fall. Both Chrissy Estrada and I will be leaving as parent reps because our children will be graduating. So uh, if you have um, anyone that is interested in becoming a member of our LSC, a parent rep uh, for both positions, um, you can start speaking to them now and maybe in, even invite them to come to a couple meetings so they kind of know what they're in for. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we can get some uh, great parents that uh, advocate for the kids in the, in the school, so. Okay, and now we will move on to the CIWP. I will unmute. Mr. Flores is already unmuted. Let me find Jenny. There's, that's the wrong Jenny. That Jenny. I don't know who this Jenny is. Okay, you guys are both unmuted. Great, thank you. Thanks, Gabby. I'm going to oh. try to present. You should be able to, I think. Yes. Um, actually, no, I cannot. Try it now. Yep. Okay. So, um, a lot of this, um, was already in the principal, re principal report, but, um, we can expand on it a little. So, um, the first thing in the last, um, since December, we, um, with our CAWP action plan, really realized that there's just a lot of heavy lifting and a lot of work to do. So we kind of had what we were calling open enrollment for our CAWP team and committees um, to really divvy up the work. Um, and so we opened that up and got some new, um, more teachers and uh, better representation across the departments. And so those new committees first met uh, last week during our um, school improvement day on Friday. Um, and so one of those groups is going
going to be working exclusively with the Equal Opportunity Schools Partnership with the outreach over the next couple of months as uh, we move into programming for next year. And like Mr. Grishaber said, uh, part of the EOS survey results that we got back were about trusted adults. Um, and we had 237 staff members identified. Um, and then we conducted a training for um, those staff members on Friday um, about how to have encouraging conversations with students that indicated that they would like to take more challenging coursework. Um, and so we will continue that training. Um, we were hoping to have those teach, uh, staff and student conversations this week, um, but we realized that was a lot to happen in a short amount of time. And so we're pushing those to the first week of, of March. So it'll be after families get the programming information um, at, our, at our family meetings next week and students get their recommendations for next, uh, for next year, then they'll be able to have those conversations with the trusted adults. Um, and that really lines up with um, the programming initiatives for next year. Um, I think Mr. Flores is gonna talk about those. Um, yeah. And then we'll move to curriculum. Yeah, thank you. So Mark, uh, Mr. Grishaber already talked about a lot of these um, initiatives for next school year. You know, the main one being the Equal Opportunity Schools Partnership. Um, like Jenny just mentioned, you know, we're looking to increase the number of students um, that would not traditionally be in advanced level classes. Um, and so uh, the data that we got um, really is helpful to, to get the, an insight on to why students are choosing not to take advanced level classes. And so these trusted adult conversations are going to be really key um, to, to making some movement there. Uh, Jenny, do you wanna scroll down to show that insight card? Yeah. So this is just an example of, of an insight card and the data that was collected um, from EOS to kind of see why kids are not taking advanced level classes potentially. And so um, in the middle, there's a, there's a learning mindset and skills. And so EOS calls those assets. And so those are uh, pre-selected lists that kids can choose from as many as they uh, as many as they feel are right for them. And then the same thing on the right um, are potential barriers that kids may face. And then the comments at the bottom are just written by students. And so it's been really great to read those comments, especially um, to kind of see why kids are not taking um, advanced level classes. And, you know, it shows that the student, you know, has comparable test scores um, to other students that are successful in advanced level classes. So it's really, it, it is really powerful data and we really continue to look forward to this three-year partnership um, with EOS. Um, so some of the other initiatives that we are working on that Mr. Grishaber did mention is our senior seminar um, for seniors that are not a part of a particular program. So they can, um, you know, get that post-secondary support um, for applying for colleges um, and doing all the things that go into that, like their FAFSA and um, making sure that they're applying to at least three colleges or universities. Um, another initiative is the uh, trying to get more students to uh, in this new class, um, which is the, uh, the AP Computer Science Principles course. And um, that's a new class that has been very successful um, for students um, across the city of Chicago. Students in Chicago have a higher pass rate than in the nation. And so um, we look forward to offering that to students uh, next school year as well. Um, the IB Language and Literature, um, it's a class that we're planning on expanding over the next three years as well. Um, students have to take four years of English. And so as we continue to strengthen our vertical alignment in our language and literature department, um, we feel students will be prepared, that all students will be prepared to take um, this diploma level course. Um, and so hopefully next year we will offer at least two more sections um, as we gear up to having all students be in that IB language and literature class um, in three years. And then the last, um, the last initiative there is an, it's a expanded occupational prep sequence for our diverse learner students. Okay, um, so in the priority of curriculum, um, one of those subgroups or subcommittees that um, 
it has expanded is uh, specifically working on a curriculum equity review tool. Um, so to really look through our curriculum across all subject areas um, to see how culturally representative it is of our student population. And so that team is looking at um, different resources um, from a variety of places and really putting together a TAF specific tool so that it's also aligned with IB. Um, there will be continued unit feedback from the IB MYP coordinators. They've done two rounds of that so far and we're gearing up for their third. Um, hey, with Jenny, can I just jump in real quick? Yeah. So with the curriculum equity review tool, I just want to just quickly note that we are we are right on target um, with with this work and I'm a part of another um, professional learn, learning committee um, that met last night uh, with administrators from all around the city and um, the organization Leadership Academy that's running it um, highlighted, uh, you know, we're looking at cult culturally relevant curriculum and, you know, the tool, one of the tools that we're using to create our TAF specific tool um, was highlighted by this other, by this outside organization. So it was just reassuring um, to hear that, uh, to see that we're, we're right on track with where we should be and looking at this topic um, that's of great interest to, to, to many people in the school. So um, yeah, it's just exciting. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah. Um, also on Friday, we presented to all staff the quarter three instructional priorities, um, really just around two goals. Um, one, making sure that that guidance pr um, prioritizes IB MYP um, aligned tasks, continuing with student supports and the house structure like Mr. G mentioned, um, while providing flexibility for our, our TCTs, our teacher teams to kind of go with where they're at, um, while also um, kind of going with their learning cycle. And then really just maintaining consistency and predictability for both teachers and students, especially as we you know, head into this third quarter of remote learning. Uh, we wanna make sure as much as possible to have consistency um, and predictability with what to expect. Um, and then with MTSS, you know, we've continued our house meetings. Uh, we look, you guys have seen the metrics um, and that Taft has, is you know, above the network average with freshman on track, sophomore on track and all of that. And then we have are planning our ATL days for quarter three and we have a, a subcommittee of, of the CIWP to plan, help plan those days. So we've got a lot of positive feedback from the first two but also some feedback um, to switch up the schedule a little bit. So we have a team of teachers working on that. Um, and then student voice engagement in civic life, uh, continuing to work with the student voice committee. Um, Mr. Flores, do you have anything to add for that one? No, I think, this month? I, I think we're good. And that's all we got. Great, thank you guys. That's a great work going on there. Okay. Um, all right, now we will move to the committee chair reports. I'm going to do budget. Uh, Ms. Estrada, let me unmute you. Okay. Chris. Okay, everybody, we reviewed the in the budget meeting prior to this all the budgets and transfers that were mentioned before. Other topics that came up, um, Mr. G has also already touched on, but I'll just run through them quickly. We um, discussed the senior fee. We discussed that we got a guarantee from CPS if we earmark any of our remaining funds at the end of the year for capital projects that they will hold them and not take them away from us. Um, we continue to discuss how we will spend any additional funds we have at the end of the year. Again, not buying computers again this year. So that discussion continues. Looks like Mr. G hired a position and looking to hire another one. Um, and that's it at this time. Any questions from any LSC members, please go ahead and put something in the chat so I can unmute you. Okay, next we have facilities. Ms. Raguso. Thank you, Madam President. Um, mentioned this at the last meeting are five main projects that we're working with our architect on to get some renderings so we can go um, market and solicit funds to help support these projects. They include the library renovations slash media center. That's our multi-purpose room. Um, the locker room, the basement locker room, which is in desperate need of, of life support. Um, the drama lab, the black, black box theater, 
Um, and then the gymnasium ventilation, as well as the concession stand out by the um, field. Those are all obviously, not obviously, those are at the varsity campus. Also at the varsity campus, there's a lot of um, great work that's being done by our security team and the custodians in areas of the school that not necessarily have had attention to it before. Um, so they're, they're finding um, areas that they can clean out, um, throw things away where they can, and really do a deep clean of the school and again of areas that typically don't get attention. Um, room 330, the math lab, the carpet is being removed. And again, this is in alignment with our overall initiative to get as rid as much of the carpet as we can um, and get it tiled. So that's a work in progress. There's work being done in the teacher's workroom um, and bids on the alumni clock are starting to come in. And uh, Mr. Levins is shooting for a spring summer installation. Uh, we did receive some good news that CPS is going to, our security system is, is terribly outdated. It's archaic. Um, they're going to pay for a new server, which is the first domino that needs to fall for the rest of the whole security system to, to be revamped. So more to come on that, but we need to put a work plan in place because it's a big project. Um, so that's that's great that they're giving us the funds for a new server so we can really tighten up and improve our, our security system. At the Freshman Academy, the <laughs> good news, bad news, the walking path, which was supposed to be the opportunity for us to improve ingress, egress for our kids into the campus is completed. It just wasn't completed the way we thought it would be completed which is to connect the parking lot to the school. Um, so we're gonna keep, uh, Alderman Spazzato is aware, Principal G is in contact with him. We've invited uh, Alderman Spazzato to the next facilities committee. Um, maybe I, we need to bring in some Chicago Park District folks as well, but we need to get that remedied. Um, the snow plowing seems to be working good um, and that completes my facilities committee report madam chair thank you so much any questions from anyone on the lsc please uh, put something in the chat okay safety and security miss mcdormand um, hello we met today at 2 30 and i guess it's a good thing to say we really there's not a lot to report since we are still remote um there were very few misconducts from the last report to uh february 8th a little bit of drama that was online not officially a misconduct it was just between some tap students and resurrection and that's been addressed um for the most part teachers are not writing up students for being tardy they're just happy they're showing up that's a good thing. And uh, there was an article attached that most of us got from LSC, which all received. It was an article about there's several schools that decided that they do not want SROs. So CPS is trying to come up with ways to address safety plans uh, for those schools that do not want them. Again, that will also be coming up. LSC is going to be asked to weigh in again on that when the contract's up. So that's coming up. And that's pretty much it. There's um, two security positions that will need to be filled once we roll around in September. And that was pretty much it. And I'll, I'll just add that I heard that during that meeting too that um, even if we have SROs, we may still be able to take advantage of those additional resources. Yes. We're part partnering with five different organizations uh, to help the schools decide what they wanted their security plans to look like. So there's a potential for us to be able to partner with those people also. Um, also, right now, because it's a safety and security issue, I'd like to see if either of our teachers or our staff rep would like to comment on the current uh, plan to for the uh, elementary schools to return to uh, remote from remote learning. If you guys have any um, opinions on the, the, the current plan or anything you'd like to share, since this was an issue we talked about, I'm going to go ahead and unmute Ms. Dirty and... Where is Mr. 
Uh, Mary Kay, I'm going to unmute you also. And then here he is, Mr. Plinsner. Okay. And you guys want to comment at all? Ms. Cobb and Mr. Plinsner, I'm happy to, but I wanted to, to see if either of you had anything to say first. Thank you, Ms. Trevin. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to yield to you because uh, you seem to know a little bit more about this than me. Mary Kay, cool. Uh, it would be perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's not, not much right now, like as Mr. Grishaber already mentioned, like CPS does not have a, a plan as far as a timeline in place for high school return, which includes um, our academic center students that we have at the Freshman Academy. Um, I think the one great thing that we are lo looking forward to um, is being able to have um, some plans in place to be able to work closely um, teachers and school administrators and other um, members of our staff in the building um, to make sure that, you know, the actual safety protocol and procedures um, that, you know, we have methods to ensure that we're following those um, and also look forward to having, you know, like community forums, discussions with parents so that like we all sort of know what to expect um, when, when the time comes. Um, yeah, so not a lot of details yet, um, again, because we don't have a high school timeline, but looking forward to making it work um, for our school. Good. Here, here. Thank you. And as we discussed during the facilities meeting too, Taft is fully ready to accept students uh, socially distanced, keeping everyone safe. So everybody's been working really hard during the pandemic at the school to get the school ready for whenever that happens. Okay, uh, that was safety and security. So friends of Taft, Ms. Bernacki. There you go. Okay. Okay, so I have not received a update from the Alumni Association, Ms. Lundy. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with them. Uh, the Taft PTSA. Uh, they had another restaurant night uh, at Chipotle on the 31st of January, and it didn't do as well as the last one because it snowed and they made $106. Their next fundraiser is going to be at Lou Malnati's, uh, three locations on February 22nd. A flyer will be sent out, and they've organized a spring fundraiser, which is a flower sale, and they have everything ready in their member hub for, uh, for to order online. And the PTSA is also um, moving forward with Friends of Taft. Their goal was to have Friends of Taft incorporated with the state in our IRS paperwork sent in by mid-February, but finding a lawyer to do the paperwork seems to be the problem. If anybody at the LSC or anybody else at the Taft community, um, they know it would be great if they had somebody they could recommend. And some of the board would like to try to find an attorney that would be pro bono, which might be difficult unless it's a parent. So if anybody has any ideas for them, um, that would be great. And that is the end of my report. And if anyone is on the call that's not on the LSC and you do have somebody you can recommend, please send an email to taftlsc at gmail.com so we get that information. We'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then we have athletics, Ms. Cobb. Oh, you're not unmuted. Hold on, Mary Kay. Hit the button. There you go. Thank you, dear. So thank you to Mr. Glowitz for this report. Um, so CPS announced today that um, high school sports programs may begin on Thursday, February 11th for the following sports. Boys and girls bowling, boys swimming and diving, competitive cheer and dance, boys and girls basketball, and badminton. Uh, there's going to be a coaches meeting tomorrow on February 11th, February 10th at 6 p.m. Um, there's a uh, sports-specific informational meeting for students and parents at 6 p.m. on February 11th. Uh, the earliest they will host any tryout or practice is Friday, February 12th. Um, Let's see, um, this will give their coaches, you know, an opportunity to get into the building and set things up. 
So um, that's a step in the right direction. So that's it. Okay, oh, fantastic, thank you. Okay, um, what is the name of an attorney that uh, files the LLC paperwork? Does anybody know? Um, oh, and then Maria said, can you repeat the date of the parents meeting? You mean the PTSA meeting? 2-11, okay, great, thank you. Um, next we have PPLC. Ms. Doherty and Mr. Pensner. There you go. All right, thank you. Um, PPLC met, uh, we have nine TAF teachers elected by their peers. We met on February 2nd, which was a week ago, discussing many issues, uh, trying to develop recommendations to the principal and the LSC here. Uh, we attempted to reformat our agenda, uh, how we run our meetings to better facilitate meetings in two different campuses. And we're making changes to that based on input from meeting participants and observers. Uh, and we submitted our agenda to the shared folder for everyone on the LSC so you can see the details. Uh, number one, uh, we've followed up on a previous recommendation to get software and subscriptions so students can access online learning materials. We decided to formalize the process for doing this so we can um, bring to you the LSC interest levels and costs specifically for these programs. Um, when I say interest levels, I mean what, how, what percentage or what groups of teachers might be interested in it. So we're trying to find a way of getting that data to you. Um, number two, we talked about um, the ETL days uh, during our meeting and how they've helped students keep up with work and deal with the stress caused by remote learning. And um, we discussed that for a bit. Number three thing that we discussed was uh, we had a team of about 15 or so teachers uh, that planned or and prepared a couple of PD sessions last Friday for a teacher institute day, uh, advancing our goal of equity We'd like to thank them here at the LSC for doing so, for inspiring us. And we hope to see more of that earnest peer-led facilitation at PD in the future. Uh, there's a lot of ideas and creativity that was um, displayed that day and, and a, lot of, a lot of earnestness that, that I was, uh, what do I say, uh, strengthened by. And before thing, uh, we went into kind of a longer part of our meeting where we um, had careful, uh, we wanna be a careful and informed PPLC and so we're developing ideas on future recommendations that deal with things like the purchase of tools teachers need to teach our students, professional development opportunities, uh, class choices for students was discussed. And we decided to do some research into studies on the impacts of class size on learning before making any recommendations on that topic. Um, and then um, Ms. Doherty Trebing wanted to um, follow up on um, some of the reopening stuff that we were just discussing. Oh, yeah, just one thing that I thought of that I think will be um, a great benefit for our school community. Um, you know, if the timeline goes through for elementary schools where they're doing phased in and so, you know, our elementary schools will have had some experience with reopening before it's time for high schools. And I think that that, again, I think that will help us, even though we know that there are ways in which high school is very different than elementary. We know that we're a large high school. Um, I think that will be good, you know, to you know, we have parents that are part of our Taft community that have children that go to elementary schools as well. So I think, you know, though it'll be good for us to be open and kind of like listening to the experiences and what has worked and what have the challenges been. Um, I think that can only help us when it's, you know, time to, you know, make it work for our own school. Yeah. So if there's any questions, we're open otherwise, um... Fantastic, thank you. Okay, any questions again from the LSC, please put it in the chat or just raise your hand and then I'll unmute you. Um, and then we have student representative report, Ms. Mano. Hi, um, okay. Um, there's not a lot for me to report, but uh, I'll just get into it. Um, as we head into the second semester, um, a lot of students are worried about and want to halt CPS's reopening plan due to fear of COVID. Um, I actually received word that a group of LSE student reps from a bunch of different schools around the city 
are joining together to write a letter to CPS um, opposing their plans. Um, of course, this is not to say that all students are opposed to going back to school. Um, while I know that there's little to be done about reopening and it's being done for multiple reasons, multiple valid reasons, I think it's just important to note the attitudes of many students towards reopening schools while we're still at such a critical point in the pandemic. And I think this should be something key that we keep in mind in our planning and organization once the academic, um, the academic center TAF students eventually return to in-person schooling in um, what should be early March, at least according to the tentative planning between the city and the public schools at the moment. So yeah, that's all I have, if there are any questions. Mr. G, is that your understanding that the academic center students will come back or will they stay with the high school plan? Academic center uh, students are considered high school students. So right now the plan is to not have them back. Um, I, and it's kind of like, I believe it's seven other schools that have academic school, academic uh, centers. I had asked the question um, if we could kind of opt in. I mean, if, if I would, and I wouldn't make that decision, but we would have a survey and see how many of our parents would opt in. And I was told that it's kind of like we're all together in this, not that we, they don't want like rogue schools kind of being, I'm back, I'm not back, I'm not, I'm back because that would set a bad precedent would say, say we did come back and it would be, um, it wouldn't be good for schools that didn't come back, the amount of pressure they would be like, oh, TAF's back, uh -huh. why aren't you back? So it's kind of like CPS has taken the, the stance that it's all academic centers are coming back or none are coming back. And right now academic centers are, are treated as high schools uh, and will not be coming back uh, for the foreseeable future that I see. Okay, I see. Thanks. Um, I was under the impression that it was due to age because like who can take care of themselves at home because older students may be able to be better enabled, but I'm sorry, I was not aware. So yeah, there's still very little to report. There's not very much going on. So I hope that it's okay. <laughs> yeah. And that's what, 150 families we're talking about? Academic Center? Yeah, 120. Ms. Fern, uh, or, I'm sorry, no, uh, 100 and, 180, I believe, 180. Oh. Yeah, 180. Okay, Eric's uh, nodding, yes. Let me just add this real quick, because I am on the committee for, uh, uh, to, for high schools to come back, uh, but I am on spe the specific committee about extracurricular uh, events at CPS, uh, and there's about three other groups, so I chose to be on that group, because uh, I think that that's more my my expertise, but one of the recommendations that we are going to make to Dr. Jackson uh, is that when we do in the summertime, they normally fund um, Freshman Connection, and I see Karen Devine on here, and she knows how important Freshman Connection is, but we are also saying, um, let if you're going to do that, we need you to fund Freshman Connection, Sophomore Connection, Seventh Grade Orientation, and Eighth Grade Orientation, because some of these kids have not been in our building at all. So we're gonna make that recommendation uh, uh, to, to CPS. I think they're gonna go with that because it makes sense. Now, whether or not that will be online or in person or some variant of that, but we do understand that, you know, our freshmen have never been in our building before. So we understand that we're gonna have a sophomore connection also. So I wanted to add that in real quick. Fantastic, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, now we are on to old business. I don't have anything. If any uh, LSC members have anything. Okay, Chris. Ms. Russo? I just want to comment on what Ms. Devine just um, chatted. Our sophomores have not stepped foot on the varsity campus building. Mm -hmm. So they'll be incoming juniors. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Devine, for. Yep. Yeah. I mean, these are the kids that, you know, they were, they were the ones who tested out the freshman academy last year, got cut right. off, remote learning. So they're going to be new to the varsity campus this right. fall. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Ms. Devine. Thank you. Anyone else on the LSC? Old business? Okay. Uh, any new business from the LSC? Okay. If I don't see you, raise your hand, please chat. I'm watching the chat too. Okay, uh, and now we have public participation. First we have, if, again, if anyone wants to uh, comment during public participation, please put your name and your representation if you are a student, teacher, 
uh, parent rep, community rep in the in the chat. Uh, Mr. Cohen, we have you first. So you should be unmuted. There you go. All right. Thank you. Um, I, I might go a little bit over the two minutes. Apologies in advance. I'm going to try to spread this. Lands a debater. She knows what I'm talking about. So I have a lot of good news to report. Um, first of all, from debate, uh, it's been a couple of months since I talked to you about debate. Uh, the team has grown by leaps and bounds. I want to shout out some individuals and some of our teams. Uh, Phoebe Tozer and Hugo Gahant, uh, Blue Conference Tournament three champions. And then they uh, went to the regional conference tournament instead of going to our own conferences tournament for uh, tournament four. Uh, to give you an idea, that's like a middleweight going up and fighting a heavyweight in terms of like the amount of experience and like these schools all have debate as a day-to-day -day class. Uh, Phoebe and Hugo had a winning record in that tournament. They won uh, against Niles West and they beat Lane twice in a row. Wow. So pretty Ooh. cool. Um, Ash Nasani and Saisha Kapoor were uh, tournament three champs as well. They got accidentally placed in the wrong bracket, didn't matter, they went through and won it anyway. Uh, and then they went back to the championship round in T4. Uh, they are both academic center students debating against high schoolers. So very wow. impressive there. Uh, Alexandra Boyke and Peyton Johnson, uh, tournament four finalists. Peyton is also an Aki. Uh, Clark Sherman and Matthew Gustafson, tournament four semifinalists. Uh, thanks to Leanne, who's gonna be speaking behind me. Uh, our student captain who has given up competing this year to be uh, our sort of chief strategist and, uh, and team captain. Uh, and thanks also to Coach Walls, who joined us this year uh, and has grown by leaps and bounds as a coach. Uh, we're two thirds of the way through the season and two thirds of the way through year one. She's where I was probably by at the end of year two. So it's been really, really wonderful. Thanks also to the Individuals and Societies Department for doing the recruiting there and to Coach Walls for doing recruiting there also. All of these students uh, were talked to either by uh, Coach Walls or their Individuals and Societies teachers uh, or both. So. Uh, Debate looking great. We've got conference tournament coming up in a couple of weeks, conference championship, uh, and we're rolling. Um, on February 5th, uh, Bridget and uh, Rachel uh, put on the best PD that I've ever been a part of uh, with the Folded Map Project. So I wanted to shout that out. Um, it was wonderful. It's Chicago specific. It's empathy promoting. And I can't wait for us all to do more with it. I really, really hope that we can do something as a whole school with this. It's a fantastic, fantastic uh, concept that they've found for us. And I want to do more. Um, uh, in terms of drama, uh, the Chicago Youth Theater Festival happened last month. Uh, this is the only citywide competition for drama. It's the equivalent of a city championship. Uh, Kira Riley and Bennett Palma won the two-person scene competition. And Catherine Herrera won the musical theater performance and best overall performance. Uh, so these are the equivalent of city championships. Credit there goes to Mr. Wilson, who worked with these students and helped them select material and coached them. Um, Catherine Herrera also won our school's Poetry Out Loud competition uh, for the second year in a row. So she'll be going to the regional championships there. Uh, credit again to Mr. Wilson for, uh, for saving that competition and allowing it to go forward. Uh, and, 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 uh, Taft Drama is back. We had our first meeting today. Mr. Nadig got the rights to a book called Motorman. It's a surrealist novel by David Oli. And Mr. Nadig reached out to the author and secured the rights to adapt the book for the stage. So next year, uh, we're <laughs> hoping in the fall, uh, we're, we're gonna be having a world premiere adaptation. And uh, today was the first meeting. Mr. Nadig is inviting students to help him adapt the script. So uh, we had 20 kids in the meeting, really, really cool. Wow. Uh, like a year to the day since we closed Failure, A Love Story, which was the last show that we got to complete. It's really, really great to be making drama again. So. Just all good news, yay, bye. Fantastic, Mr. Cohen, I'm gonna put a new category in the meeting called good news, and that's gonna be just for you and you can take as long as you like. <laughs> Fantastic, good work everybody, so proud of all of you, amazing. Okay, uh, now we have, where did she go? Leanne Nazal is a student at Taft, go ahead Leanne. Hi everyone, um, hope everyone's having a great evening. Okay, so I wanted to give some perspective um, from a student who was from a marginal, I am from a marginalized community. And um, I started off TAF in the gen ed curriculum, now I'm an I'm IB junior. And I wanted to say that I always said this and I told Ms. Condos this, that if you want students 
like me in those classes, you have to use the teachers to target them because the teachers know the students work. And if you know the students work, they, that gives the students so much more confidence. It's like, whoa, I can do this because I went into it. It's like, I, 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 at home, my parents don't speak English. So I, they don't have an idea what I'm doing at school. So I, I didn't have that support. And when Ms. Kampara and Mr. Plensner um, told me, no, you should take the APUS course. Um, and then Ms. Kampara pushed me into take, doing IB, that gave me so much more confidence to be able to like, okay, I can do this. Um, and then uh, this whole idea of mindset is also really prevalent because the truth is I, I felt like I couldn't um, do it because I be, I be in the gen ed classes, I noticed is looked at as like, oh, it's only for the smart kids, um, whatever that means. And um, I think destigmatizing it and just showing, well, no, it's not, you can do it too. Um, but I also do think you have to do be cautious of pushing students um, who are capable of doing the work and making sure that they actually want to be there and then putting students who don't want to be in those classes because there are students in AP classes and IB classes because that's going to not only it's going to fail them. Um, the classes they're not going to do great in. They're not going to be enjoying the material. Um, it's also going to give the, put the teacher in a really hard position because it's like, how is she go? How is the teacher um, going to be able to work with the students if they don't even want to be in that class? And I think that is something moving forward that you should be cautious of because you it, because there are students who want to be able to be there and do the work. They just don't have that confidence, or sometimes their circumstances at home um, don't allow them to. They either have to take care of their siblings or their parents work after school and they have to be there making food for their younger siblings and being that caretaker and those genuine circumstances don't allow them to be there and um and then also accommodating them and seeing how they can do this this could be done through study groups i did an april study group last year for kids who wanted it um and that helps student-led study groups and creating spaces for students to be able to work together and uplift each other is also really important um and mr cohen can tell you i'm very passionate about this i always 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 um want people who are able to do it to actually do it um and then maybe consider opening up AP classes for uh, freshmen, because I know freshman year, I wanted to take AP Gov, um, but it, I couldn't um, because I wasn't, I was, I was in gen ed classes and um, I couldn't do it because, it, and I think that can also help up bring up the stigma that you don't have to be an IB to take these courses. Um, and then last thing you should address is when, um, you, so with IB, I am working a lot with Ms. Condos on this. IBSL is also working a lot with uh, Ms. Condos to, to fix this. Um, it may, like understanding the program is really important because kids go into it junior year and it's like, wait, I have to do this. Why do I have to do this? And then that, it takes away so much more from the program because the kids are not there to do, to actually become better and be better students and do the work and take the material and do something with it. They go there just to do the work and they, they don't end up getting the, the, the things that you want to do. Um, and I think it's really important that, that the information about IB or AP classes um, should be out there, not only out there, but genuinely have the students that want to be there. And, and, and that's that's really important because I think that there's they're so cool like taking um, A plus I I had plan stars for A plus last year my favorite class um, he taught me my love for history and I think that's really important um, so yeah hi Mr Plantner <laughs> <laughs> okay bye everyone thank you Leanne thank you for your passion and uh, uh, you're gonna go very far in life <laughs> thank you okay. Uh, I didn't see anyone else that uh, wanted to comment during public. So I believe we are ready to adjourn. Kathy, can I add one thing real quick? Absolutely. Um, and I'm going to ask Mr. Cohen, I really miss our student spotlight that we used to have all the time when we had in-person meetings. So I'd like to bring that back if we can. So if Jonathan can kindly ask the young lady that won the Poetry Out Loud uh, slam, if she can attend our next meeting, um, next month uh, and just have her contact me and I'll, I'll give her the invite and everything. I'd love to hear the poem that she read uh, and that would be great for our student spotlight for next month. And then Ms. Byrne, if you could put that on the agenda mm -hmm. so we remember to do that, okay? Got it. Uh, what was yeah. her name, Mr. Cohen? Yeah, I've, I've got her in class. I'll talk to her tomorrow. Perfect. What is her name? Uh, Catherine Herrera. With a C or a K? Uh, with a C. 
and uh, I'll, t I'll type it in the chat. Thank you. Can I just say how cool it is being a, being a, a I love poetry and the fact that we have a, a, a young student that's a poet at the inauguration and also at the Super Bowl too, that poetry has taken a step out in front of everybody. It's, yep. it's really, it's really, it's really great right now. So. Cool. Yeah. All right, everybody. I believe we are adjourned at 741. Thank you so much for your participation. We always appreciate it. Remember, you can always reach the Taft LSC at taftlsc at gmail.com. Thank you. Have a great night.